a tour of our raised bed garden, some harvests we made, some things for you to do this month, and a lot more in today's episode of California Gardening. We will begin with a garden tour. We will look at all the harvests we made this month. We'll then look at some things for you to do in your garden. We have a recipe for you. And finally, we'll take a look at some cool gardening products. So let's begin with the garden tour. As you know, we were setting up our raised beds. And finally, we completed setting up all our raised beds. We got some good quality farm soil. Our contractor was able to get this in his truck. This is really good quality black farm soil. That is a mix of sand, clay, compost, and it looks really good. So we took all this soil and added it to our raised bed. So as you see, the raised bed was about 50% topsoil already, the topsoil that we had in our garden. And then we added on this really good quality farm soil. And eventually, over a period of time, all this soil will get mixed in. The soil below the topsoil will also get all the nutrients it needs. And we started planting our tomatoes. We have eight tomatoes that we planted in this raised bed. And before we planted, we used some all purpose organic fertilizer, some worm castings, which will help uptake of the fertilizer. And for the calcium, we went with gypsum, although you have a lot of choices for calcium sources in your soil. But I do recommend that you choose some source of calcium because tomatoes and peppers do need it. Now to plant the tomatoes, we just made a little planting hole. And remember that tomatoes need to be planted deeper, as deep as possible. And the first thing we are doing is adding some worm castings. These are the Vermistera worm castings. And I'll provide a link to all these products in the comments below and the video description as well. We are now going to be adding a calcium source which is gypsum. And once again, you can use other sources. I tend not to use garden lime because it does alter the pH of the soil, but any other calcium source should be fine. And this is some all purpose organic fertilizer. Once again, you can use any fertilizer that you like. You can even use compost tea or worm tea every 15 20 days. But when I'm planting my tomatoes, I do want it to get to a good start, and which is why I'm preparing this planting hole with some nutrients, the soil, the planting soil or the so soil which we got from the farm. This is actually some commercially built soil. So they call it farm soil, but it's pretty much a blend of everything that you want in good quality soil, which is compost and sand and clay, a little bit of everything. So we completed planting all our tomatoes, just like you see here in the planting hole. Tomatoes are the first thing I planted just because the grocery stores these days are running out of tomatoes and I do want to have a good supply of tomatoes in our home garden. These are the varieties that you see here. We are trying some new varieties this year and I'll let you know how this goes. For example, the slicing tomato is a new variety and there are a couple more new varieties that we are trying the Bonnie original. I have no idea how this one grows but it will be a good experiment to find out. And the big boy is something that I have tried previously as well. It's a very prolific tomato. And the Super Sweet 100 is a cherry type tomato, which is also a very interesting one. So all in all, some new tomato varieties this year. And we will see how this goes. I'll let you know which ones performed well versus which ones that didn't do that good. But overall, I'm very happy to have planted tomatoes. Next up is onions. We got some onion sets and it's actually quite late to plant onions. I still wanted to plant some onions just because we wanted some for our own use at home. And by this time, most of the onion sets would not be of good quality. So it's important that when you buy onion sets, you choose the ones that are good. And we have done this before as well when I showed you how to plant onions from onion sets. You want to make sure that anything that is squishy or doesn't have a lot of meat in it, should be discarded. And only keep the ones that are nice and sturdy. And even then you're going to have some failure. You will see that some of these onions will not sprout into plants. But you can just do your best. Just make sure that you're sorting out and making sure that the onions you have are good quality. We are also planting some okra seeds. Now what I did realize is after I planted the seeds in this raised bed, 
I planted about two rows and my son was very helpful to plan this out for me a little bit as to where the seed should go. And we're planting this approximately 6 to 10 inches apart. And the rows are about 6 inches apart. So just two seeds in each planting hole and that's all you need to do. And you can thin these out later. Now one problem that I did have is we still had some construction activity going on around the raised beds and some of the contractors put some pavers right on top of these seeds and even though I mentioned that these are seeds I think they are not very aware and they are not as plant loving as some of us are. So not really a huge deal but I hope the seeds still germinate and we'll see how it goes. Now we also planted some peppers. This season we are trying out some new pepper varieties. Now I haven't been very successful in growing peppers in the past few years but there were a couple of varieties that I did want to try out. This one that I'm planting right now is the candy cane pepper and it looked very interesting. The peppers look quite beautiful and I thought I'll try this one out. And we are also planting another pepper variety and the planting technique for peppers is pretty similar to how you would plant tomatoes. You basically have a planting hole with everything that I mentioned earlier the all-purpose fertilizer, worm castings and some calcium source, in this case it's gypsum. And we are planting this one just like you would plant tomatoes but not too deep. You don't need to plant peppers too deep. And these are the two pepper varieties as I mentioned and I'm really looking forward to growing these two newer pepper varieties this season. And as far as cages go for peppers you don't really need cages. But I had two cages lying around in my garden anyways and I thought it would be put to good use by just taking this pepper plant with this tomato cage. Now remember this is the smaller tomato cage, tomato slash pepper cage which has three prongs and this is not very usable for tomatoes. For tomatoes you need the four pronged cages but for peppers this is good enough and make sure that you water your pepper plant or tomato plant anything that you plant right away because the plant needs to settle down especially with the fertilizer that we are adding it helps to make sure that the plants are well settled in and the roots will start forming soon and we also have some cayenne peppers that we are planting these are organic cayenne peppers and I have saved the seeds from a previous plant that I grew in the past few years and this is an excellent, very prolific cayenne pepper variety. And we had been growing these indoors just so that the peppers get a good start before we plant them outside. And now that they have grown into a little mature seedling, we are ready to plant this outside. And once again, it's the same kind of planting technique that we discussed for the tomatoes as well. And these cayenne peppers don't need to be staked. They have quite sturdy stems. So that concludes all our planting that we did this month and this is our raised bed area. Once again you can see that we have a lot of plants that we planted and hopefully this will keep improving. We will keep having some more plants and we also did plant some fruit trees in the ground. These are all dwarf fruit trees and they shouldn't grow very tall. They should just grow to about 6 to 10 feet and hopefully these will get settled in quite fast. And now let's look at all the harvests we made this month beginning with radish. We had this early maturing radish variety that we were growing in this whiskey barrel container. And we were growing about 4 or 5 radish plants in this container. And we were able to harvest all of these radishes from this whiskey barrel container. And as I mentioned this is one of the survival crops that I mentioned in my previous episode. Tomatoes, radishes, these are all great crops to grow. They don't take up too much space. And we also harvested tangerines. This is the gold nugget tangerine that had been growing in a container. This is a great variety of tangerine to grow in a container and it grows well in the ground as well. And we harvested all of these tangerines. We have been harvesting it for quite a few months now. And even through March you can see that these tangerines are quite nice. Moving on to tomatoes. We were growing this one lone cherry tomato variety in a container. We were growing this indoors and then we finally moved it outside to this container and we did get a few harvests. Now the weather is still a little cool for tomato production but as the weather warms up 
in the next two months or so. We should start getting a lot of tomatoes not only from this plant but also all the other plants that we planted in the raised beds. But overall cherry tomatoes are easy to grow in your garden. And now for the things to do this month, we will show you how to clean the hydroponics grow kit, the grow box that I discussed in my previous videos. This grow box, the Green Joy hydroponic grow box was extremely useful in the past month and we grew a lot of herbs and vegetables in it. And at the end of the growing season or the growing cycle, you can see that there's a lot of algae on the base of the reservoir, the water reservoir. And you need to get all this out and disinfect it before you start growing your next set of plants. So the first step to do is to just clean the algae that you see on the surface. It's a little stubborn to clean. So if you want, you can use something like a scrubbing pad or a cloth, a microfiber cloth to clean it. But I just cleaned it a little bit, let it soak in the water for some time so that it loosens up. And after some time, I was able to drain the water and then clean all the algae that was there on the surface. Now it may take multiple attempts or multiple tries for you to clean all the algae that's there on the surface of the tank. And a good way to do this is to use a microfiber cloth. Just use a microfiber cloth and then just start cleaning it. The benefit of using the microfiber cloth is that it not only cleans all the algae, it also lets you absorb all the water while you're cleaning it. It takes in all the water and then you can squeeze it out. And you just keep repeating it till all the algae is clean from the surface of the tank. Now it's very important that you keep the water tank clean. And I also recommend that once you've finished cleaning the water tank, you also use a disinfectant. You can use some bleach. I'm just using some bleach cleaner here, which will disinfect this very well. Now, another thing you can start doing this month is to plant fruit trees. Now, if you have missed out planting on fruit trees in the past two months, this is still a good time to plant fruit trees because the spring season has arrived and this is a good time to plant fruit trees so that they can take root and they can get off to a good start. Here you can see our mango tree. This has been flowering now. And now for the recipe section in this month's episode. And it's not really a recipe, but we're going to show you how we use all the harvest from our garden to juice it. And we have this juicer. This is a very handy juicer. And as you can see, we are putting all the harvest that we made into this juicer. This juicer is quite cheap. It's about $50 or so. And you don't have to buy an expensive juicer. I've tried a lot of juicers and just this $50 juicer that you can easily buy on Amazon or Target or any other store is good enough. Now when I'm making my juice, I not only add all the fresh harvest from my garden, but also add a lot of greens. In this case, I'm adding spinach. You can also add kale. You can juice wheatgrass, kale, a lot of other healthy vegetables and greens. And some people have asked me a question about juicing. And they are asking me whether just juicing is enough or you know you need to consume the fiber as well. And the answer to the question is you need both. Juicing lets you extract all the vitamins and minerals from these plants and consume it. And it boosts your immunity right away. Whereas consuming the fiber is also a good choice, but it has a different purpose and that's to keep you full. And in these times, it's very important to make sure that you are immunity gets a boost and as you can see it's a beautiful looking juice that will give you a lot of vitamins and minerals to boost your immunity. Now let's move on to gardening products. A lot has changed in one month but when I went to Home Depot the beginning of this month they had a few dwarf avocados. They also had a lot of mango trees, a lot of fruit trees actually. The mango trees can be grown for either their leaves or the fruit. Most people grow them for the fruit. And there is this manila mango as well. So all in all, a lot of different fruit tree varieties. There's this pink tropic guava. So Home Depot itself has a lot of varieties of fruit trees for a decent price. Like the dwarf peach fruit tree and a lot of nectarines. So all in all, great collection of fruit trees at your local Home Depot. But I would recommend that you stay indoors during these times. Just avoid going to the store unless you really need to buy something. But if you do need to buy a fruit tree right away, then these are your choices. 
So there we have it folks that was our California gardening episode for the month of March I hope you all stay safe and take care of yourselves try to boost your immunity by drinking fruit juices and eating healthy fresh fruits and vegetables and while you are at home continue to garden with your family and these are good times to be together so make use of this time stay healthy have fun and I'll see you again soon happy gardening <laughs>